Good afternoon and welcome to the Midday News. Here's what we have in the bulletin. Police killed in Westmoreland despite imposition of state of emergency. Police say more resources needed to fight crime. And in later West in sports, national players come to the defense of record boys coach. I'm Ashade Masters. Here are the details. The Police Federation has condemned the killing of Police Constable in Whithorn, Westmoreland last night. This latest killing of a JCF member has renewed calls for the government to improve welfare benefits for rank-and-file members. Sandra Williams reports. This is where 25 years old Constable Devon Brown was murdered Wednesday night. He was a student at the National Police College of Jamaica and was assigned to the Manchester Police Division on internship. However, his dream of serving the country as a law enforcer was cut short. It's reported that Constable Brown arrived home in Nogatown District, Withorn, Westmoreland, about 9.45 last night. Shortly after, he went to a nearby shop to purchase food. Moments later, several loud explosions were heard. It's what prompted family members to rush to the area. All right, I'm the light here, I'm right there, so see the light outside, light there, and I'm right there, so, so that means that if, if I did... If, if me did, did it, well, me no know. Um, boy, I know this little youth, oh God, a saint. This little youth, no, it's funny, my little come right up. Nice growing up, little youth, quiet, boy. Me don't really want to know kill this little youth for. Really, really, what I want to know. Me would have want to know if I really take, take him for wrong person or something, but something wrong. Cause I don't, I don't know of this youth in a no wrong. So. Constable Brown was found suffering from gunshot wounds to the upper body. The police were alerted. When they arrived, they assisted Constable Brown to the hospital where he was pronounced dead. The police believe that Constable Brown's murder stems from a dispute between his brothers and some men from the area. One person has been taken into custody in connection with the killing. Chairman of the Police Federation, Corporal Ron James, has condemned the killing. Corporal James is again calling for the government to give attention to improved welfare benefits for rank and file members. We will use this opportunity again to implore upon our employer not to wait on the compensation review implementation, but to, in fact, respond to the security emergency that currently exists and to seek to, as best as possible, alleviate a demoralized force and to provide the resources so that at least every citizen of this country can feel assured that we can respond. Sandy Williams, TVJ News. In the meantime, concerns that the increase in murders in, the Westmoreland, in Westmoreland may be due to lack of police resources. Westmoreland is one of the areas now under a state of emergency. Earlier this week, we spoke to the head of the Westmoreland Police Division, Codian Barrett, now reports. There is an uptick in major crimes in the parish of Westmoreland, raising concerns over adequate police resources in the parish. According to the police data, from January 1 this year up to November 13, the parish recorded 106 murders compared to 67 for the corresponding period last year. That's 39 more murders, representing a 58.2% increase. Shootings are also up by 44. That's roughly a 62% increase. There were 114 shooting incidents in the parish this year when compared to last year when 70 incidents were recorded. Commanding officer for the Westmoreland Police Division, Superintendent Robert Gordon, says the division is doing what it can with what it has. We have to be strategic in our deployment, in covering the area with what resources we have. So when we do our risk assessments, we deploy accordingly. Unfortunately, there might be an area that did not come up on your radar as a place that you would want to de deploy and an incident happened. And Superintendent Gordon has described the mood in Darling Street in Savannah Lamar, Westmoreland, as a tense calm. This after a double murder in the area on Tuesday, 48 hours after the imposition of the states of emergency. Superintendent Gordon says there is heavy police presence in the area. We would have inserted our operatives within that space. We have both covert and overt operatives operate, operating within that space uh, as we speak, but a tense calm remains. 
In the meantime, Superintendent Gordon says that the issue of crime in Darling Street has been going on for years and is appealing to residents to work with the police to bring some level of normalcy to the area. Cody and Barrett, TVJ News. In other stories, opposition spokesperson on education Dr. Angela Brown-Burke says reinstating former Education Minister Royal Reed as principal of Jamaica College could cause damage to the school's reputation given the allegations of corruption which hangs over his head. Opposition spokesperson on education Dr. Angela Brown-Burke is not in favor of extending the special leave of former Education Minister Royal Reed, who is facing allegations of corruption. She has reiterated her call for Mr. Reed to be retired in the public's interest. Quite frankly, there are several ways to do it. If we assume that Mr. Reed is a reasonable man, then that should be an easy conversation. If we assume that he is not a reasonable man, then the discussion becomes a little bit more difficult. But the truth of the matter is this. I cannot think of anyone else who would have been accused of the things that Mr. Reed is being accused of, where the government would have taken this position. I don't know. The only thing that could come to mind is that he has the kind of information or the kind of strength or the kind of power or connection that make him bigger than life. In the meantime, she says the government needs to make clear its position on corruption. The government also needs to be called out on being hypocritical and being and, and giving the clearest sign yet that thieving school picnic lunch money and putting it in the pockets of your connected friends don't mean anything. If the government is serious about the position they are taking on corruption, on breach of fiduciary responsibility, then they have to make it clear. In the meantime, the Board of Jamaica College will issue a statement tonight or early tomorrow on matters related to extending special leave with full salary and benefits to Earl Reed, who still holds the post of principal. A decision is pending on the way forward. The Board of Jamaica College last month voted unanimously to send Education Minister Favel Williams a list of recommendations for action. The Board was expecting a response from the Education Minister last Wednesday. However, Mrs. Williams said no decision has been made on the matter. And it's now time for a break here on the Midday News. Stay with us. More stories when we return. Welcome back to the Midday News. A two-year-old is among 12 more persons who died from COVID-19 on Wednesday. The death toll is now 2,343. 97 new cases were confirmed from 983 test samples, resulting in a positivity rate of 11.8%. The country's overall case count now stands at 90,467. Over the last two weeks, there have been 912 active cases. 175 people are still being treated in hospital, 7 are critically ill and 29 severely ill. 175 persons have recovered pushing the overall recovery count to 61,313. The parliamentary opposition is calling for the major organized crime and anti-corruption agency MOCA to conduct a probe into what it describes as deeply troubling issues highlighted by the Auditor General's report on the Jamaica Customs Agency, JCA. In a report tabled in the House of Representatives, the Auditor General highlighted a financial exposure to the JCA of over $2 billion and uncollected revenues of over $664 million. In a statement today, spokesman on finance Julian Robinson said it is important to determine whether this loss to the government's coffers was as a result of negligence or criminal conduct. There's a push this afternoon to get more Jamaican drivers to use electric cars. That charge is coming from Energy Minister Darrell Vaz. At a function on Wednesday to mark the opening of a charging station in Portland, Energy Minister Darrell Vaz announced that plans are already in place to get more people to drive electric cars. We are creating the architecture to support a robust e-mobility environment which is supported by policy and regulations. The Ministry of Finance and the Public Service has concluded its review of the fiscal regime and we intend to submit our e-mobility strategic framework to cab Cabinet in short order. 
Managing Director of Total Jamaica Limited, Christopher Oconma, said the company is shifting towards sustainable energy. He said Total Jamaica is looking to expand its scope of developments across the island. I just recruited a renewable expert who is working with uh, Paris on a daily basis to see how we can make investments in this country for wind and also for solar energy to supply to the grid if the opportunity exists. In the meantime, Mr. Vaz said the finance ministry has completed its review of the fiscal regime and an e-mobility framework is expected to be submitted to parliament soon. He added that there is also consideration to cushion the cost to import electric cars into the country. As far as the Ministry of Science, Energy and Technology is concerned, we are pushing for a significant reduction in the duties on electric vehicles. Currently, they are absolutely too high and hopefully we will get consensus in the coming weeks when we go to cabinet. At the moment, there are 10 electric charging stations across Jamaica. Krista Campbell, TVJ News. A St. Andrew business operator is crying foul as he says he is now facing a forced closure because of a land issue. The proprietor operates Danny's Marina and Harborview St. Andrew, and he fears the lease problem may turn customers away. Danny's Marina has been a popular bar and grill in Harborview St. Andrew for years. The current operator is Danny Davis. I'm here from I'm a child. I'm here, I'm my grandmother was here as I see her on the wall there. She was here before, years ago. And it was a little board building and um, I transform it into this. Mr. Davis says he and the other three business operators at the location leased the property through the Commission of Lands. They have been using the adjacent lands as parking for customers. But Mr. Davis says a recent development will leave him without customers. Uh, it was promised to me that I was getting a lease on this section, this portion of here for the car park. And however, um, it leads to somebody else. By right, they were supposed to give me a letter. Well, no, never tell them to give me a letter, serve me a letter, knowing that they will lease the area. I didn't get a letter from them to make me aware that they will lease over there. So they just come and start moving them stuff and set them when dump up the car park. He says almost all his customers drive, and so without the parking area, his operation will suffer. But in addition to that land issue, Mr. Davis says his establishment has been left out of the tourism and other development plans. And I want to know why Danis Marina is not a part of the new St. Thomas development, especially on the Port Royal cruise line. When the tourism come here, where the tourism going to park, where the Juta guys going to park, for the tourists then. And I'm already established, as well as you can see, I'm, a, I'm established. So I don't know why is it that they have, in, they have this big plan and everybody have plan and they have plan and they have plan on Danny Marina. Why I can't be a part of it? He acknowledges that if he is forced to close, he will have to send home staff. I love the government to intervene in it, to um, see where I can get some justice from it. Because if it is for lease, I know I can't afford to pay the lease, you know, for my business. Mm -hmm. And, you and ask I asked for it before. Kirk Wright, TVJ News. And despite several attempts to get a response from the National Land Agency, NLA, we were unsuccessful. And it's now time for the Business Minute. In the financial world, as the business process outsourcing sector bounced back from the pandemic, so are its employees. President of the Global Services Association of Jamaica, Gloria Henry, is calling for a revision of the mandatory daily self-reports to the Ministry of Health. We have demonstrated that we can self-monitor ourselves less than 1% of infection inside since the start of the pandemic. So I believe that's enough to justify a uh, reduction in the, or a change from daily reporting to monthly reporting. In response to the need for an environmentally friendly end-of-life solution for lithium batteries, Tropical Battery Company Limited will begin collecting spent lithium batteries for recycling in early 2022. 
The company plans to export the spent lithium batteries from consumer electronics and electric vehicles to be recycled by a leading international recycling partner that recovers 95% of the elements for sale back to global battery manufacturers. Tropical Battery will collect the spent lithium batteries in specialized receptacles at all its six locations across Jamaica and is encouraging the public to bring in spent lithium batteries for recycling. And that's it for the Business Minute. I'm Cody Ann Barrett. Now time for the top regional and international stories with Sandy Williams. In regional news, the St. Lucia government says it is committed to constitutional reform and will be effected fully or in part during its five-year electoral term. Prime Minister Philip Pierre said the government has signaled its good governance intentions by the appointment of a deputy speaker. Pierre told Parliament that his administration in its first 100 days has reignited the Constitutional Reform Commission presented to Parliament in a motion debated in August 2015. He said since the approval of the resolution by Parliament in 2015, little progress has been made on this important matter. Further afield, Germany has recorded its highest number of new infections since the start of the pandemic. More than 65,000 new cases were reported within the last 24 hours, according to the country's Disease and Control Center. That is over 12,000 cases higher than the previous day. Germany's health experts say one reason for the spike is the country's vaccination rate. Currently, it is just over 67% which is one of the lowest vaccination rates in Western Europe. The outgoing Chancellor, Angela Merkel, has described the situation as, quote, dramatic. The three political parties negotiating to form the next government is expected to debate a new draft law on Thursday that would impose stricter rules. With the top regional and international stories, I'm Sandy Williams. And we head to a quick break. When we come back, we'll have your midday sports report. Simon Preston is here. Welcome back. It's now time for midday sports. I'm Simon Preston. National player Ravel Morrison has come out in the defense of coach Theodore Tapa Whitmore. The player took to Twitter to give his views on the last two results and the head coach. With speculation building over the tenure of head coach Theodore Tapa Whitmore, Midfielder Ravel Morrison, who is known for his attacking qualities, came to the defense of Whitmore in a tweet on Wednesday. The 28-year-old tweeted, quote, Makes no sense to sack Tapo. We have just played two very good games, and we were the better team in large spells of the game, and very unlucky to not take maximum points out of both games. The tweet went on to say, One game was a late equalizer, and the other was, for me, a wrong decision made against us. End of tweet. TVJ Sports understands that the JFF's seven-member technical committee last night voted by a margin of 5-2 to two on the recommendation that they are not satisfied with the coaching staff being led by Theodore Tapa Whitmore. It is understood the technical committee will meet with the JFF hierarchy to discuss the fate of Coach Whitmore. Since returning for another stint in 2016, Coach Whitmore recorded 23 wins, 14 draws and 17 losses. Meanwhile, former England international Ricky Hill, who is heavily tipped to replace coach Whitmore, also took to Twitter on Thursday and answered some questions from Reggae Boys fans. Hill said, I have no idea regarding the reported information. As far as I am aware, coach Whitmore is the head coach and I wish him and all the squad every success for the World Cup qualifiers. One love. In 2021, Jamaica suffered seven losses while picking up three wins and five draws. Meanwhile, TVJ Sports understands that Paul Hall will remain part of the coaching staff of the Reggae Boys. Reggae Boys defender Liam Moore and Reading FC's hopes of promotion to the English Premier League next season has taken a hit as the club has been handed a six-point deduction by the Football League. The Royals have received this punishment after admitting to exceeding the English Football League's profit and sustainability limits. The club will also receive a further six-point penalty next season. The six-point deduction now leaves Reading 19th in the championship on 16 points. This is four points above the relegation zone and 10 points adrift of the playoffs. Moore, who is the captain of Reading FC, and is in his sixth season with the club. The 28-year-old defender has made nine appearances for the Reggae Boys since his debut against the United States in March. 
Seven Jamaicans are selected to compete in the 2021-2022 season of the Abu Dhabi T10 League in the United Arab Emirates. All-rounder Ravman Powell captained the Northern Warriors franchise and will be joined by countryman Kenar Lewis. Chris Gale will once again deck out for Team Abu Dhabi and will be joined by Sheldon Cottrell. Fabian Allen will suit up for the Chennai Braves, while Andre Russell and Dean Smith will play for the Deacon Gladiators. Of the 135 players selected for this tournament, 26 of them are West Indian. The tournament is set to run from November 19 to December 4. And that is where we'll pull up stumps for now. For your midday sports report, I'm Simon Preston. Ashain, it is over to you. Thanks, Simon. Just before we go, though, I want to see your view on um, the recommendation from the technical committee to sack Tapa. Yeah, you could say, especially the last two results, you know, disappointing, especially the margin for error and everything of mm -hmm. that nature. It appears that Paul Hall could be given the nod. We'll see where time is concerned, but, you know, we have to give credit for what Coach Whitmore has done through in the spell, getting to a Gold Cup final, a semi final, a quarter final. So, despite what recent form has suggested, he has done some good work for the national team. Thanks, Simon. And that's it for the Midday News. I'm Shane Masters. Join us at 7 for primetime news on behalf of the news, sports and production teams. Good afternoon.